some of the difference between the American pho and the Vietnamese pho is the freshness of the vegetables you can buy and what you're able to buy out on the markets easily and what's accessible. Just like how the French invented the pho because they could easily get the ingredients for the pho there. So they changed their own stew and their own soup to become more with a Vietnamese twist to it. So it becomes the same thing when you order um, any type of food that's Asian food, especially in another country. Hi, this is Anita from the Dusty Roads podcast and from the blog, A Bus on a Dusty Road. And today I want to talk a little bit about pho, or as the Vietnamese say pho, which is basically, it's an iconic Vietnamese dish, which many of you may have seen or tried. It's basically the Vietnamese version of what we in the West would know of as a chicken noodle soup. And the question that was asked is, what's the difference between pho in America versus pho in Vietnam? And there are some real differences, because I've had them in both places. And I'm just going to talk mainly from my own experience. And a lot of the pho that I've eaten, I want to first of all say, is a northern pho, not a southern pho, because I live in North Vietnam. So that's the type of you know, uh, pho that I eat here, gets, gets cooked here for me. Is, is the northern type of pho, which I happen to really like. But, you know, the northern and southern uh, pho, you know, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a little bit different. The uh, north and southern pho tends to have different, you know, types of meats and flavors. So there's kind of this great debate between, you know, the north and southern pho and what's the difference is. You know, they both use rice noodles, they both have like a clean and a simple broth. So so they'll use like a clean and simple broth between both of them. Um, the northern fowl will eat a lot of chicken and beef. And then the southern fowl will have beef plus they'll have a lot of meatballs. Um, the northern fowl will have more green onions and more greenery on it. And then the southern fowl will use more bean sprouts and herbs, including Vietnamese or, or the type of basil. The northern pho will use like a vinegar, fish sauce, and chilies, you know, added for the different types of seasoning. And the southern pho will use more like a lime, um, hoisin sauce, chili sauce, and fresh red chilies. And sometimes they use their sriracha sauce in there. They'll, they'll stick that in too. So first I want to talk a little bit about a little bit the history of the pho. It's kind of a, a bit of an interesting history. That, you know, pho came to North Vietnam, they say, in the mid-1880s, when Vietnam was under the French rule. Because Vietnam was a French colony, it's only natural that pho has influences from French cuisine in it. Because, you know, the French came here, and there was, a, it believed to have from a French soup that the French had, and the, it sort of got adjusted over time, and that it started becoming this Vietnamese version of their own chicken noodle soup. Um you know, the Vietnamese could not get all the ingredients to make the French stew. And so they improvise and they mix Chinese, French, Vietnamese ingredients all together to be able to make this pho. They, you know, decided and said they'd use the rice noodles because rice noodles um, can be found here quite easily. And they use many spices that also came from China. The French also gave the Vietnamese a love of red meat or beef. And, you know, beef pho is still considered to be one of the most traditional Vietnamese pho dishes. So, you know, the chances are if you're going to get a pho that you're going to end up getting a beef pho because that's kind of a bit of a traditional dish. Um, traditionally, the pho, in nor the northern pho was kind of a straightforward kind of beef noodle soup. You know, it was a soup that had the rice noodles in it and then it would, you know, have in it... Um, you know, some of the, you know, they maybe had some vegetables and gradually over time, after 1954, the dish started to move southward and more ingredients started to be added on it, the more it started moving down to the south. So it kind of is today where it is today. This pho is sort of where it is today because of this evolution between starting out as more like a simple maybe beef noodle soup and then moving down south to having all these spices and bursts and other things with that. The Vietnamese um, 
pho is kind of a national dish of Vietnam. So it's it's one of these extremely popular dishes. The Vietnamese are extremely proud of their dishes. If you talk to a southern person, they'll tell you, oh, the pho in the south is so much better. You talk to a northern person, they'll probably tell you the north. If you tell a central person, they'll probably tell you the central. And that's kind of one of the beauties of this dish is that even though it's different in each of these different areas of Vietnam, and each person will probably have a reason why their pho or their noodle soup is better than someone else's. CNN has rated the Vietnamese pho or the Vietnamese noodle soup as one of the world's top 50 foods. And so this means that it shares kind of the same um, 50 top foods with, you know, French toast, maple syrup, ketchup, pizza, and fish and chips. So, you know, this pho is basically sharing with these other foods the same top 50 foods. It's only the second dish to be pronounced that. You know, it's it's often a word that's uh, mispronounced because when you look at it in English, it's P H O, but really pho is is correct pho. So that's why somebody might say pho. You might go, huh? You know, you mean pho, but it's actually pronounced pho, and it's just a broth that fresh noodle um, with noodles, a few herbs, and usually chicken or beef. You know, it's it's fragrant, it's tasty, and it's balanced. So, you know, once you've eaten this sort of like this Vietnamese pho, this Vietnamese soup, you know, I guarantee you'll never look at chicken soup exactly the same again. And that, I find, is one of the beauties of this simple dish. So now a lot of people ask, like, what's the difference between, you know, the the pho you get like in Vietnam and the pho you get, let's say, in in America or some other place? And if I was going to say one word, if I was going to put one word down for the difference, I would say freshness. In Vietnam, the Vietnamese will go every day out to the market and they will go out to buy their vegetables for the day. You know, it's not like where we do in the West where we might go to the market once a week, we buy all of our vegetables, we sit them in the refrigerator, and then, you know, we eat them as, as we eat them. Where the Vietnamese, a lot of times, will go every day to the market, will go out and they'll buy the fresh vegetables. So one of the first things that I notice is that the Vietnamese pho uses really fresh vegetables, vegetables that were usually just picked that day, vegetables that were, um, you know, just sold at the market that day, that they've used really, really fresh vegetables, that they also will use um, a lot of fresh herbs. You know, we have growing up on my balcony here in Hanoi, we have a lot of the Vietnamese herbs growing in these little boxes. And you know, these fresh herbs are hard to get in other parts of the world because they're grown in Vietnam. So if you really want to make a good pho at home, consider getting some herbs or some herb plants, Vietnamese herbs, and grow them on you know either on your balcony or some other place. And then use those when you're making this dish because really the fresh herbs can make all the difference. The other thing is the noodles. You know, um, Vietnamese don't make the noodles themselves generally. They will just buy the noodles from the market. The noodles are made fresh. So you can really taste the difference between fresh noodles and not fresh noodles. And, you know, maybe part of that's just me because I've lived here in Asia for quite a while. I've lived with, um, I've eaten Vietnamese food for quite a while now, but you can just really tell the difference that the noodle's fresh. So normally if we're going to have a noodle dish or something with noodles in it, we'll go out and we'll buy the noodles that day for us to eat that same day. You know, noodles aren't something that you normally will, you know, keep in the refrigerator for a long period of time. Part of the reason they do that here is because noodles are staples, so they're so they're not expensive. It's kind of a little bit like rice, where, you know, rice tastes really best when you have the rice that's fresh versus the rice that may not be quite so fresh. And, the, you know, the rice that's been like a couple days old or, you know, if it's been frozen and reheated, it doesn't taste as good as the fresh rice. So same thing with the noodles. The noodles really taste good because they're made fresh. They're not made from dried noodles. The other thing I've noticed too is lime. I like to put lime on my pho. And here in, in Vietnam, when you have lime and you cut the lime open and lots of juice will squeeze out. I was recently home in the States and I bought some lime and, you know, I came home and I thought, oh, great, I'm going to squeeze some lime. And ugh, it was such hard work to squeeze the lime out. I just basically gave up and I thought, what a waste of money this was because you maybe get one or two drops out of each lime. So actually, you know, the freshness of the, the lime that's being used too also makes a difference in this dish. One of the other things, uh, major differences too, is that is how they cook the broth. 
And if you go to a noodle stall or you go to somebody who's cooking this pho, chances are that that broth has been cooked for a long period of time. They, you know, haven't used, you know, any type of, um, um, you know, like, like not so much the powdered broth, but really they're using a lot of um, other things for flavors. They're cooking the bones and they're making like a true bone broth with for this pho. So that's also one of the things is that, you know, having the broth is the basis of this food. You know, the broth is the main part of this food. You know, the other things are sort of added on top of it. The, you know, noodles are added on to it. The um, vegetables are added on to it. The meat is added on to it. You know, this is not a dish which has a lot of meat with it. It's, it's really the broth that is the main part of this meal or of this dish. So, you know, one of the main things is the broth is, you know, it's this broth that's been cooking a long time. It's been out there. It's been, you know, gathering its flavors. It's because it really is the heart of it. In the north here, especially, they use a lot of star anise and cinnamon. And star anise comes from North Vietnam. That's sort of the cinnamon here. They might put little touches of it there. I tend to really uh, like this about it. But um, it's one of these meals and one of these dishes that really like, you know, the different spices can really make the difference between uh, the different types of pho. You know, it's it's really, it's a, it's a great iconic dish here. And it's a dish that you could try to make at home. And if you were going to make it at home, you know, I, I would say that you try to, um, you know, probably try to have a really good broth. Uh, you try to have really fresh vegetables. You try to have good meat, you know, because... Um, even though in Vietnam they use a lot of the local meat, but I always find the pho tastes better if you have a really good cut of beef, especially if you have a beef pho. And, you know, it's because all of these things can really make a difference with this Vietnamese dish. One of the great things about the Vietnamese pho or the chicken, Vietnamese chicken noodle soup is this really is a great example of how colonization actually ended up influencing a lot of different foods here that we take for granted now as always having been part of a culture. Pho and beef is a great example of this, that the French came in and wanted to have something from home. And I always said many times, having been an expat myself, that a lot of times, you know, you just want to have something from home. You want to have a hamburger because, oh, you know, hamburger is not something you get often. You want to, um, you, maybe you're from Italy, maybe you want to have a good pizza, you want to have some good spaghetti. You, you know, we all long to have something from our home or something from where we came from. And that was no exception at all for many of these colonialists who came to this part of the world. And you think about it, they didn't have what we have today. I mean, they basically were thrown into another country culture and were, were thrown to have to use all the local foods, all the local spices, everything else that was local there. And they then had to find a way to make dishes or other things that made them feel or reminded them a bit of their home. And this pho is a great example of this and how the Vietnamese actually adopted this too and how this became part of their life and part of their food. One of the other great examples of this in Vietnam is also the bread. If you come to Vietnam, you'll notice that out on the street, there are people selling bread everywhere, these little loaves of French bread. And sometimes you'll see women with these carts and baskets with this bread stacked up. And actually, it's a really good bread, I have to say. The local Vietnamese bread is very good, and the Vietnamese use it to make things, as make sandwiches and other things like that. But all of these sort of this Vietnamese twist to it because, again, the colonizers were using the ingredients and the other things that they could find here in Vietnam. So they basically learned to improvise. They, they learned to change their taste for what they could find here. And in the process, they changed the taste and the food of a nation. So today, things like the pho, some of the other noodle dishes that are here, some of the breads and the other things that were brought here in many ways from many of these French um, colonizers who, who came here and made this country their home. Because again, just like the rest of us, you know, they want to have something that feels like home. They want to eat some foods that feel familiar to them. 
And they want to feel like when they are here, that they are basically having something from where they came from. And pho is one of these great examples of one of these dishes. And so if you're going to try pho in, in America or in Europe or another place, the things that you should really look for is to really see and understand how fresh ingredients that the restaurant is using that you are going to. If the ingredients are fresh and they have some of the local spices and some of the local herbs and other things, then it should taste pretty much like it does here in Vietnam. But I have found through most of my travels that somehow food always tastes best at where it came from. In other words, if you want to eat really good Vietnamese food, you're going to find that in Vietnam. If you want to eat really good Thai food, you're going to find it in Vietnam. Food, to me, always tastes best at its home location. Probably the same thing with European food or French food or Indian food or other types of food. It's always tastes best for some reason at its home location. And a lot of reason has to go back to what I spoke about at the at the very beginning of this when we were talking about some of the difference between the American pho and the Vietnamese pho is the freshness of the vegetables you can buy and what you're able to buy out on the markets easily and what's accessible. Just like how the French invented the pho because they could easily get the ingredients for the pho there. So they changed their own stew and their own soup to become more with a Vietnamese twist to it. So it becomes the same thing when you order um, any type of food that's Asian food, especially in another country, they may be using some ingredients and other things which are more native to that area than to here. We hope you've enjoyed this podcast and that you'll go out and you'll get yourself a bowl of pho and try it if you haven't tried it yet. It really is a delicious type of food. It's it's worth trying. And let us know if you try it, how you like it. Let us know if you think it's good or if you don't think it's good. If you happen to be traveling to Vietnam, do make sure you get yourself a bowl of pho to be able to try it and to see how you like it. You will not be disappointed, I promise you, that it is something that you will enjoy and something which is extremely tasty. After all, it is considered one of the 50 top foods in the world by CNN, and it shares that uh, place with a lot of other popular foods that we know, even as potato chips, ketchup, pizza, all of those foods also share this with the Vietnamese iconic dish, or the Vietnamese noodle soup known as pho. Thank you so much for listening. We truly do appreciate your support. And we hope that you'll subscribe to our channel and that you'll check out our blog, A Bus on a Dusty Road. And we really do appreciate you and your time. Thank you.